Hi, in our example for group signing, we're going to have a contract, as you see over here. And this contract has to be signed by somebody from the legal team. It can be uh, multiple people that uh, get the question to sign it. And then after somebody from the legal team has signed it, then our tenant has to also sign the document. So we have uh, just two uh, signature placeholders right here. And we have obviously a configuration that would then create those placeholders. If you want to have more config types or a different use case, obviously you can do whatever you like in the configuration. I will not explain that right here. Uh, on our opportunity, I have defined the designers via contact roles. So you can see that we have uh, various contract roles. We have our signer, Jack Rogers, who is the primary signer. And then we have uh, multiple people from the legal team. And these uh, signers I have identified with their role. So now I have uh, created our um, doc config and in our, uh, sorry, uh, our data sources. And in our data source, I first define who is going to be the legal team. This data source with the assigner selected from the, uh, upper, uh, from the opportunity contact roles is a list data source because I expect multiple records. Uh, in here because this is group signing and then I defined how to write that query and I uh, actually wrote that query myself just to say okay I want to um, query here on the role signer. Obviously I have another data source for the primary contact and this data source here is then a single because this is only going to return one, uh, one person, one contact. Cool, that's the setup. Let's take a look how we would configure this. Um, in here, I have my sign request template. My sign request template, I have indicated that I have the two data sources uh, that I need. So that's my uh, uh, contact roles for the signer. It's a list and my primary contact. There's not going to be no other configuration done in this setup. And then I can just go here and add the signers. First off, I have to select the group signers. If groups is not uh, uh, valid or is not present, then you can just go into setup. And on setup, you're going to go into object manager. So in the object manager, you can go to the stakeholder because here we are, of course, working on the stakeholder. Um, and then on the stakeholder, you will see that there is a field called role. And on this field, you can just add the uh, uh, the groups, as you see over here, into the values of that pick list. So in this case, it's an uh, it's a, a global pick list. You can just add that extra group there if it's not present. Okay, so I'm gonna go for groups here. I'm gonna say that they have to do uh, a scribble on the screen, and then I select my data source. So that's gonna be the one for the opportunity signers. Uh, and then I'm just gonna map all out all of the fields that I have in my data source. So, and I'm gonna say the static language of English. Add the signer. Now I'm gonna add a second signer. They also have to do a scribble. And this second signer is just gonna be my primary contact. So let's go for this one. First name, last name, email, and then the language default English. So. That's my two signers. You can see that now I have the groups set up and I have the signers set up. Let's go for the next and then submit this configuration. To start this, obviously I have created a pack and in this pack I have just indicated that I want to use my group signing uh, sign request templates. How that is used, that of course you can find in other tutorials. Uh, from here, now what I just want to show is that when I uh, generate the uh, the sign request, it's going to send out the sign request to these three uh, email addresses. So now it's going to generate the document, the contract, and also look at the sign request uh, configuration and send that out. So that's already done. We can actually now take a look at the, uh, the sign requests. And we can see that the sign request for group signing is here. And when I open it, you see that indeed all of these three people now got uh, a sign request and the three emails were sent. Here I can see that uh, there is indeed three emails that were sent. So the email is sent to legal two, 
to legal three and to legal one. So let's say that in this case, George is at the office and he can pick it up. So he will now click his email and sign that, uh, that document. He has to scroll to the end and then say, I have read and approved the entire document. Make a scribble and then say sign. So now it is George that has actually signed the document. So that would mean that the other signers would get an email and that uh, they would not be able to uh, anymore sign the, 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 the contract. Or it's, they count and, they, and they, it's not required anymore. So you can see in the overview that is an X now. They cannot do anything anymore. And then uh, George Leo has uh, signed the contract. Inside uh, our emails, you can also now find that there were two emails sent indicating that the uh, um, that they don't have to sign it anymore, that they don't have to take any further action. Cool. Also, next to that, we have now sent an email uh, to Jack. This is now uh, sent right now, zero minutes ago. And now Jack, as a second signer, can continue and uh, sign off this entire contract. So uh, let's scroll to the end. And now I can say that Jack is going to sign. So again, we can check in Salesforce the status. Let's refresh this page. And we can see here that now Jack has signed it. George has signed from our legal team. The entire stack trace is there. Everybody got the emails that uh, uh, who has signed it and what was done. So now we know everything in this group signing uh, uh, demo. So here in this demo, I showed you that you can create a group signing and then uh, actually have one person of the group signing and actually even put that into a sequence of signers because now after the group signing we can even have another signer signing off.